Well, Nick Spicer is covering this for us live from Copenhagen. He joins me now from there. Nick, first of all, what are the biggest issues for Danish voters today? Well, I spoke to a good number outside of City Hall here where people have been voting. There are fewer in number now. It's a working day here. The big crowds came in the morning and they set up a number of things. A lot of people put the environment forward as a big concern. Health care is a big concern, but also the war in Ukraine. Security and defense issues are a concern at the highest level they have been in 30 years. So since right after the Cold War, there's real concern about the explosion that took place on that Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline in Danish territory waters. Many people here see that as an, atta uh, an attack that was orchestrated uh, by Russia. So a concern about the general situation, and you get the feeling overall that, you know, the Danes are often rated as the happiest people on earth, according to study after study, that that sort of happiness bubble has been burst by the war in Ukraine, by the increasing uh, inflation and economic insecurity. Nick, the elections are actually being held early, ahead of schedule. Why? Yeah, it's, it's a bit of an incredible tale. It has to do with minks, the animals that make fur coats. Denmark happens to be the country that is the world's, was the world's biggest mink producer until a cull uh, ordered by the prime minister, Mette Fredriksen, during the coronavirus pandemic. There was a fear that the mink had a type of the virus that could, you know, jump the species barriers into humans and make vaccines unusable. So they were all killed, over 15 million of them, billions of dollars paid to the farmers. One of her coalition partners and government thought they saw an opening and said, look, if you don't call for an election in October, then we're leaving government and the government will collapse. So she had her hand forced. Seven months on, the situation has changed. There's the war in Ukraine that I was you know, just mentioning, the explosion of the pipeline, the high inflation, energy prices. So she's not looking as weak as she had been in the past. And certainly that the political configuration has changed. She's campaigning on being a safe pair of hands and saying, look, I will provide you with uh, the security to go forward. And as you were mentioning in your introduction, there's this third man, uh, a former prime minister who has left his party to create a new moderates uh, party, and he may become a kingmaker. And it, to that end, it would actually serve the prime minister's interest, because what she's calling for in these times of trouble is a sort of grand coalition, the kind that you see uh, in Germany, for instance, a big tent gathering of all the many of the mainstream parties in in Parliament, with the exclusion of the extremists, uh, basically to get through these troubled times. And, you know, we'll find out later in the evening what the results are. There's 179 seats in Parliament, 14 political parties to deal with. So whatever happens, the results will be somewhat complicated. There won't be a definitive winner tonight. We won't know the name of the prime minister. There will probably be days and weeks of negotiations to get the shape of the new Dan Danish government. Nick, thanks for that. Thanks for keeping an eye on that story for us there out of Copenhagen. That's our Nick Spicer.